What's up guys, it's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. It's been about two weeks since we inoculated our totes with um, the Porcini Mycelium and the Kingstrafaria Mycelium. So I showed you guys an update last week with the Porcini. It seems like the humidity inside the dome is just too much for the plants to handle. So I'll go through um, my quick remediation for that, but um, honestly, I'm just looking forward for the outdoor projects. I think a lot of these problems will go away once um, it's more you know, prone to temperature and humidity variations um, compared to the really high humidity in the dome. But I got some really cool feedback um, and some pictures from Europe that I wanted to go through. So I'll do the, the video of the quick remediation and then I'll go through some pictures. Um, and then also our Kingstrafaria started to come up through the casing layer. So I'm going to be swapping out the tape on that and it looks really healthy um, with the Dr. Mike spray. So I'll keep you guys posted on um, the progress of that. So it's a little bit slower. Actually, it's a lot slower than the Porcini, but it seems to be healthy. So I'll um, go through that update as well. So it's been almost two weeks now with the Porcini experiment and it seems like the mold is spreading pretty far. So I've got some things here to try to mitigate this. Um, but one of the cool things about doing these experiments on the internet is that, you know, you get a lot of feedback. So there's a, a lot of really good ideas of what we could do to improve our experiment for next time. And um, someone from Europe actually reached out to me with some really interesting photos and, you know, proof of um, practice of this. And I see it, some of the flaws that I did. So I'll go through some of those pictures that they sent and, um, kind of update my you know methodologies moving forward but I'll just uh, go ahead and open this up and we got some hydrogen peroxide here that I'm just going to be spraying on the plants to really try to um, eliminate any kind of micro that's on there and then I've got a spoon here it's just a stainless steel spoon that I am going to try to remove some of the contaminated substrate. So this isn't best practice, um, but I've already gone pretty far in this project and mostly it's just to see if this is, um, you know, heading in the right direction or not, um, but definitely not best practice to try and dig out contamination. I recommend starting over and I'm going to be doing some different outdoor experiments in the very near future so i'm not too concerned about that um but anyway let's just crack this open and see what's going on in here all right so you can see these plants just did not do well with all the moisture content that's in here there's you know, quite a bit of trichoderma going on. And you can see the different colored mycelium. And right here, this is the porcini. So that nice dark brown, almost amber color mycelium. And it is starting to get taken over by all of these intruding forces. So that is one of the issues with growing porcini in vitro with a plant is you have to consider, you know, the what up, what other organisms are coming in with the plant. So I'm just gonna go ahead and really mist everything off with some hydrogen peroxide. So the idea is that it's going to desiccate any of these spores that are on the surface of this plant and on the top of the substrate. But honestly, it might be too far gone. All right, 
So I'm going to remove this foliage from the plants so that at least the rootstock will remain and hopefully still form that relationship with the fungus, but not too hopeful on this round. And then I'm just gonna use a spoon to kind of carefully scoop out some of this contaminated substrate. Some of the, you know, really neat suggestions that we got were to have like a separate tube where the plant could reside. That way it would have, you know, some better fresh air exchange and it wouldn't be as prone to mold. I think that, you know, in the future, just starting these seedlings in vitro with plant tissue culture um, would be ideal because then you could just have them both in the same vesicle and, you know, it would be a sterile plant. Um, and then, you know, the alternative is to move it outdoor, which we're going to be doing as soon as it warms up here. Yeah, it definitely looks like there's quite a bit of trichoderma that is starting. And I'm just gonna compost all of this into the garden. Okay guys, so as I'm looking through these pictures that were sent to me from Germany, you can see the nice rhizomorphic mycelium that has attached to the roots. Um, there's some, you know, little pins, questionable looking pins, but then when we go on to the next pictures, you can see how developed these plants are and how deep the soil is. So my, my thoughts are that maybe the, the volume of the soil needs to be increased and that way it will re still retain the moisture but not affect the plants as much. Um, all right. All right guys, so this is the King Scarfaria um, update after two weeks and you can see coming closer um, some of the mycelium that's poking up through the casing layer. So. I'm just going to be swapping out this painter's tape for some 3M tape. Um, so I can do that really quickly. I might be able to get a good view through that hole.
we have it. Um, I'm just going to put this out in ambient light at about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And hopefully we get some pain soon. Um, give us a thumbs up if you enjoy our videos. Um, subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. I'm going to be putting up some King's Trecaria cultures as soon as I get some fruits. And um, coming up soon we're going to be inoculating some outdoor gardens. So I'll show you guys how to do that.